That first edit was absolute trash. We had big chunks of black space and like the stuff audio was off on the lip stuff. Thank you for catching that. Boom. I need you to watch the whole thing. Find any other issues that we have with editing because we're using some new editors if you haven't noticed. So tell me what you think of that and if it's working or not. Let me know when you get bored, all that kind of stuff. Also, Elvis Jet Tag, we are up to $4,500 on serial number 001. And no, I haven't actually found the original 00001. I don't know where that thing's at. But go to charitybuzz.com slash save to 310. The link is on the screen. Go bid that thing to the moon. 100% of every penny goes to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, Elvis's favorite charity, and now it's Jimmy's World's favorite charity. So go bid it up. Bidding ends May 11th. All that is done. Now let's get back to the revised video again, because what could possibly go wrong? I bought seven airplanes, sight unseen from Facebook Marketplace, for $100,000 and we have five days to get them all going. This one is airplane number six. If you wanna see the other videos, check them out. Uh, it's day number four, and I'm exhausted. It's double shot espresso day. Uh, and the goal is to sell them all and be able to keep one of them for free. And today, we have a pretty exciting one. It's an aerobatic EAA biplane. And it hasn't ran in years. So we gotta see if we can get this drill going. And then later, Mountain Dew for sure. This is an EAA biplane, and it's meant for acrobatic stuff. You know, all the, that stuff. Uh, powered by a Lycoming four-cylinder, 0290 with 135 horse or something like that in it. Uh, but thankfully, hallelujah, because my arms, both of them and Jesse, I'm surprised he's able to hold the camera up. We're just gone from throwing the, the Luscombe we had to throw. We had to do the Piper Cub. We had to do the Jenny. And then we, no, the Jenny was electric. That's right, I forgot about that one. Fantastic. And then the SE5 that hadn't started in like 15 years uh, with a Volkswagen engine on it, of all things. And then I'm, we're still struggling with the Pup, if I'm honest with you. That one, the smallest, simplest airplane of all of them has kicked our tail so far but hey it's day number four we still got the rest of today if we get these going and we'll see wings engine propeller this has good brakes on it oh yeah it's got some of that checking stuff so it's gonna need some fabric love yeah it's got it all over the place. Yeah, you can see how the tension is out of the fabric right here, how it kind of buckles a little bit where that drum, boom, boom. Yeah, the fabric all over this thing is gonna need some love. This up here doesn't look too bad. Okay, and I will make one observation. Last time, I actually put this thing on backwards and yeah, I'm a kind of a dork anyway, but that was like super dork mode. Uh, so this goes on the, on the back and not the front. So it goes on like that. <sighs> I'm telling you, dude. This, this hat was worth this whole purchase. This is, oh. Start here. Volts. Air altimeter. Your speedometer, your airspeed indicator is all normal. Your tack over here, normal stuff. Oil pressure, also all normal. EGTs for your exhaust gas temperatures and pretty normal. Vertical speed, also normal. Oil temperature there. It's got antennas on the back. So these antennas are normally for like, you know, VOR or something like that for navigation stuff. And I was a little confused as why they would be on this airplane but I don't actually see any avionics in it at all, not even radio or transponder. And normally transponder antennas are little stubby ones under the front and your communication antennas kind of come off right here. And, and these are VOR you know, antennas, so I don't know why those antennas are on there or what their purpose is. 
unless that was on there before and just somebody just didn't take them off whenever they stripped it all out. I don't know. Oh my gosh, dude, this is so light. This... Look how light it controls are on this. Oh, that's the other thing. There's no flaps on it, and the longer the aileron is, the more directional control for like roll rate and doing stuff. I mean, it's a little crunchy. Yes. Oh yeah. That's fabric, but it's fabric, but it feels like aluminum right here. What the? It is aluminum. Oh, there you go. The whole thing. That's why. That part's aluminum. So then the control, oh, I see the tape line right here. You can kind of see it right there. Oh, yeah. And then it goes to fabric. Yep, right there. Oh, that's kind of neat. And this one also, it was in an accident 25 years ago or something like that, where they were doing, they were flying it and they did something and they stalled it close to the ground or they were doing a maneuver or something like that and then it crashed and spun and messed up a wing or it, something like that. But the guy ended up dying and then the airplane was still in savable condition so that somebody else bought the airplane and then you know re redid it. However, the airworthiness certificate went from a standard experimental, which means you can kind of do whatever you want to do like the Lance Air, to an exhibition experimental, which means you have to tell the FAA where you're going, when you're going, how you're going, how long you're going, and basically they are going to be hardcore big brother because this airplane has a history of death and destruction. And they're just, they don't, the FAA doesn't trust it anymore, so they just want to keep a closer watch on it, which is also a, kind of a bummer. Um, so in order to fly it, under certain circumstances, you have to tell the FAA ahead of time what you're doing. So that, that part's a bummer too. But I'm wondering if the better value in this is actually the struts and the, the parts of the airplane, the engine and that kind of stuff, because we got logs for it and everything else. So I'm thinking value-wise, this one's probably worth more in parts than it as a whole. And that's gonna hurt my total getting that airplane for free. So that's a bummer. <clears throat> Ooh, hey, this one has a mixture, like a standard. This is the first one of the airplanes that actually has a mixture control on it. That's this knob right here. Oh, Lord of mercy. And then there's your go fast. Carb heat. Uh, is that fuel or mags? That's mags. And they're on. <laughs> Let's turn those off. Fuel selector, pull on. Okay, so you pull that on for fuel to be on, I'm guessing. There's our starter. There's the boost pump, which is okay. That's weird. The alternator switch, the master switch. Okay. We got a water hose inside here. What the heck does that go to? So when you turn the water on, can we see it going down? Yeah. And, oh, ow. Turn the water off. Is it going up? Yeah. Huh, there you go. Well, let's take a look under the hood. What do you think, Jesse? Let's do it. Mm. One thing, one thing. What? You notice? that help me get out of here handle? Uh-huh. Yeah, that's nice. Yes. Yeah, the Jenny don't have that. None of them have that. There was one that did, but I was it was filled with so many spiders and other junk that I didn't, <laughs> I wasn't putting my hand in there. I think it was the SE5 that had it. And it was, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to get some sort of vaccines or something for getting down in that thing. It was rough, you know, but yeah, this one, no spiders, we're good. Yeah, there's not even like squirrel nests or nothing in this one. Shoot, man, this one. No nav lights on this thing either. They were seriously not about telling anybody where they were going or what they were doing. 
let's take a look under the bonnet now. You'll notice something in the background here and um, kind of looks like a P51 Mustang because it kind of is almost. It's like, a, it's like a teenage, it's like a P50 and a half Mustang. And you'll see more about that one in the next video. Hey, we got our old trusty Lycoming. Pretty standard stuff actually. Carburetor down there. You know, intake pipes, normal spark plugs on this one, which is always good. An oil cooler that's in the normal spot. This is very much a certified airplane type of setup, which is great because that's really what we're used to. And with the experimental stuff, people built them. You have no idea what switches they decided to put where or how, what the thought process was going into it. But this one looks like it's set up like a certified or, you know, standardized airplane build, which is fantastic. Start solenoid. Uh, so the oil should be on the other side. We'll just check that. Make sure the prop, the mags are now turned off. We'll, ooh, that starter's stuck. So we'll need to throw some lube down in there, get a straw and see if we can't get that gear to go back in. Oh, Lord have mercy. My freaking, golly, Gomer. Don't put your oil cap on with a torque wrench, people. It just, a little snug, that's it. That's all you need. Ooh, black gold. Texas. Smells pretty good, actually. Smells used, but not old. Mmm. Wanna smell? Mmm. Looks like the last oil change. September 5th of 19, seven quarts, W100 at 18 hours. 18 hours. And look at the hobs in there. 70. 9.2, 18, oh, so that's a lot of hours <laughs> on oil. I mean, it smelled like it definitely could have had hours, but it didn't smell like it had that many hours on it. Is my math right? 79 minus 16, quick, see if you can beat us with a calculator. 61, like I said, 61. I guess my math wasn't that bad. There you go. Yeah, that's a lot of hours on oil, and that oil definitely did was not uh, 61 hours of oil. Okay, there you go. Check our, see how nasty of gas this is. And they have a paper clip on it to keep the cork out of the fuel so that it doesn't soak. Oh. So we got this much fuel, that much. Actually, that's a lot of fuel in there. Oh yeah, yeah. That's good. It's mix. I smell regular gas and a little bit of low lead. Doesn't smell bad though. Doesn't smell super fresh, but it doesn't smell bad. And I'd like to find the fuel. There's the gas clater. Don't. <laughs> so we had a small issue with the Luscomb and we had to overnight it from BAS, the parts place in Greeley, Colorado. And they came through in a major way, saved the day, but the, it, the one that we overnighted was that one right there. So don't look at it, but it's the same one. All right, I'm gonna get in there and let me know <laughs> All right, uh, mixture coming up, and that should be full rich. That looks like it from here. I can't see where the stop is on the other side, so. Okay. That's a, that's a thing. Okay, go ahead and go uh, cut off. All There's right. cut off. Full rich. And cut off. It looks pretty good. All right. It, uh, all right, go ahead and go back to idle. That's idle. Full? Okay. Okay, go ahead. Yep, there's fuel on. Yeah, leave it out. Let's see if we got any fuel leaks. Here, 
we're gonna do this Florida way. Drain quite a bit out of it. Oh, we don't go on that thing even stop. Look at that. Oh, there it goes. Just kidding. That's normal. That's the tension, the surface tension releasing. But hey, it's got some blue in there. I don't see any water, which is fantastic. I'm thinking we uh, pull the plugs, crank this thing over to prime everything for oil, throw the plugs in, roll it out, and full send. It's, uh, it's a coming. You can kind of feel it. I don't know when it's supposed to rain, but I know we are supposed to get some storms throughout the day at some point. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start lubing stuff up, try to get this freaking starter. Yeah, see if you can get that to unkick, um, which you may end up having to do is see if you can get a little flathead in there to move it back. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna pull bottom plugs. Okay. That's funny. What? It's a, it's a lie coming, but it's got the big, like, continental style um, plugs in it. Anything else that moves on this thing? I'm gonna need a seven eighths and not a three quarter. But we can go to the handy dandy toolbox that's set up exactly like the other one. <laughs> which is, that's how you know the guy. That's fantastic. Was very peculiar. Yeah. Yep, yeah, that word. Can I uh, borrow your flashlight? Are you gonna need it? Yeah. If you were ever gonna buy something, it would be from him. Right. All right, I'm gonna move the uh, mixture and throttle controls again. Okay. Oh, that's a lot better. That one's still, oh, there we go. Move it again. Something is. Yeah, I hear something under the dash hitting. Me. Oh, it's right here. All right, we're gonna cut off back here. Fuel still on. Okay. <clears throat> Not bad. Ooh, that one's definitely wet. Ooh. Is that fuel? Yeah, I think so. Okay. That, and I'm also pulling bottom plugs, so it could just be a little bit of residual oil that's sitting there. Ah, what I'm trying to do is get this in there to be able to get onto that Bendix that's in there and get it to slide back. This is, is this his battery charger or is that just a tester spot? That's the charger. That's where it was plugged in? Yep. That's the, well, that's, <laughs> that's where he would plug it in, yes. <clears throat> Mags are off. Yeah. Oh, plugs are on it. Bottoms. Dude. Now the other thing we can do is as we crank it over, it might come back since back, we yeah. lubed it up take the we got plugs out of it so we can crank it and see if we can't get some oil pressure all right 
Let's check the brakes. I'm gonna go in there, pump it a few times, and then I want you to get on the wing and try to roll it and see if these brakes work. Okay. They look like they're normal brakes, so. Now climbing up in this freaking thing. I think the last time I was in here, I busted my shin. Yep, right there. Oh, good lord. <gasps> we have normal brake pedals, and there is nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> nothing. All right, do you see the uh, brake reservoir out there somewhere? Yeah, there is a uh, zero reservoir here on my front. Unless it's like under here. I mean, it could be. No, no, they're absolutely on the pedals. All right. So here's what we're going to do. I'm not we're gonna, gonna worry about that. We're just gonna because this is an airplane. It flies. It doesn't drive. <laughs> okay. We don't need brakes. They no. just slow you down. Yeah. Right. We're fine. Uh, you want to test the uh, starter? Starter. I'm gonna bump it. Woo! Bump it again. It's not coming off. That's not coming it's off. Not kicking back. Uh, I'm gonna test the boost pump. Boost pump works. Boosting. Um, that's all the electrical system on this thing. So, starter master is off. Starters off. Mags are off. Everything's off. Okay. I have one other idea. You need a little ting ting on that thing. A little ting ting. The paint. Yeah, Jimmy. quit! You're messing up the paint. Why? How dare you hurt the paint on this, Jimmy? Look at that, man! Don't mess up my paint. Uh, if we go straight that way. Send it. <laughs> I'm just kind of hitting them with some brake clean to get any uh, oil or carbon or anything and just make sure it's a good dry plug and get the tinkering. Okay. So I have a total of four, five screws here. Just throw one in on the front here. It's got one in the back. Okay. Just throw that one in and that one. Okay. And then on this side, well, hey, we got plugged in wires. Not on. I know. I, that's. I'm just making sure these screws are the right size. Oh. I know what I'm doing, Jimmy. All right. You questioning my abilities? I just get All right, getting I would anxious. Too. Don't worry, I would too. We, okay. We're getting anxious. Getting excited, man. That's what we do. Okay, battery is connected, battery is connected. We've checked oil, yep. lead, lead, no plug leak lead. No leaks on the fuel, everything's in cutoff. Uh, okay. Are you clear? Uh, yeah, I'm clear. I'm just watching for spark, go ahead. You ready? Yep. We're ready. We're gonna roll it out, tie it down, hit it. You guys know what to do. So how many cranks do you think it's going to be until the sucker fires and runs on its own with real life? Go ahead and start entering it in now. All right, push forward on the plane and let's go ahead and set that back. Make sure that's got tension on it. Ready? Nice. There's only one thing to do. We're definitely putting this sucker on for this one. Yeah. <laughs> Profile picture. What's up, baby? <laughs> I've been married 20 years, can you tell? I don't care. <laughs> All right, like I said, can I get a clear prop? Mags are off, masters off, we're in idle cutoff. Oh, we had a whole bunch of smoke coming out of that thing. 
a lot of oil smoke. Woo! First crank, whenever I remember to turn the mags on, boom, fired up. That's fantastic. We got a significant amount of oil smoke coming over there, but I'm sure it'll be fine. And this, loving this thing. I might just wear it home. Okay, so we had a crap load of oil smoke coming out of this thing on the exhaust. Oh, yeah, right here. Right there out of this valve cover dripping onto that exhaust. That's exactly what it was. It's an acrobatic plane, so it's probably got a smoke system on it, and this is just a built-in smoke system is what that is. So you can see your tricks in the air, and this one, see? It's fine. Self-lubrication, see? Yeah. It's its, it's uh, anti-corrosion built-in. Hey, that is fantastic. That means this airplane ran phenomenally well. That was the first time in three years it's even been pulled out of the hangar and tried to start first try fired up and ran great so we are in the money on this airplane that gets us closer to the hundred thousand dollar goal to be able to get an airplane for free but i am excited because the next video in the series is that one right there yeah this is the bee's knees right here you'll see more about that video soon my name is jimmy and this is elvis presley's private jet that we found abandoned in the desert after 40 years and we are doing something very very special with it we're taking that converting it into a bus so it can tour the country once again just like elvis would have done this is a actual piece of the airplane these are uh, i believe parts of the wing and it's the very first piece that we're making for this serial number 001 and we gave you a bonus one over there as well. 100% of all these proceeds goes to St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. Bid it to the moon, help those children out, and keep Elvis's legacy alive. And you can follow the whole crazy journey on my YouTube channel, Jimmy's World. You get a certificate of authenticity because I signed it. I'm the one who actually helped make these things. Uh, and we got a FAA bill of sale proving that Elvis Presley actually owned this jet. It's a one of a kind. They will never ever be made again because this was his only other jet other than the two that are on this plane in Graceland. And I doubt they're gonna be doing anything like this with those. Go bid it to the moon, help those children out, and let's keep Elvis's legacy alive.